Well, hey, what is up, Inside Out? I'm so glad you guys uh, decided to join us here tonight and, and uh, show up for Inside Out for our summer kickoff party. Uh, it's going to be a great time. I hope you've had fun already, but uh, we'll have some more fun in just a bit. Hey, my name's Heath. If we haven't had the chance to meet, uh, I get to lead Inside Out here at Brownsbridge. And so uh, I'm very excited to see you guys here and to get to be a part of what uh, is happening here at Inside Out for the summer, because this is not just a, a one-night thing. We're kicking off a whole f- summer of fun stuff. And so uh, I'm so glad you're here. Tonight, to kick things off, I have a really quick question. Uh, I'm just a normal guy. I don't have any special powers or abilities. Uh, the only thing that separates me from you guys right now is I have a microphone on my face. So the one thing that I want to ask you, and uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to turn and discuss with the people sitting to your left and to right. If you don't know those people, it's a great opportunity to meet friends. Uh, here's the thing. If I was a person with some kind of powers, like a genie or you know, something where I could grant every single one of you one wish, what is the one wish that you would ask for? What is the one wish you'd ask for? If I had the ability to grant it, what would be your one wish? You've got 20 seconds. Ready, go. All right. What are some of the uh, some of the best wishes that you heard? What? Are, teleportation. what? Teleportation. teleportation. That's a really good one. That way you don't have to sit in traffic on 400. That's a really good one. Jack, what you got? I don't want to be ginger anymore. You don't want to be ginger anymore. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think some of us work on appearance. Yes. If you could read minds. Ladies in the room, if you could read that guy's mind, can I get an amen and know what he's actually thinking? That would be a good one. Yeah, these folks are feeling it. Uh, I'll take one more, one more, one more. You want to be ginger. You want to be ginger. So y'all, should, y'all should talk afterwards, see if y'all can swap experiences. All right, so regardless of what you heard, regardless of what the people said next to you, um, really, in reality, there's only one answer to the question. Whoever you are in the room, there's really only one answer to the question, and you all know it's true. Uh, if, you, if you didn't get the one answer, I'm going to share it with you now. The, the, the real answer to the question is infinite wishes. I mean, the, if you get one wish and you don't wish for infinite wishes, it's, no, I didn't give you any rules. I gave you no rules. That's the one wish that you want. If you think about it, that's what we all want. I started thinking about wishes and uh, why we would like to ask for wishes, why people request wishes in their life, why movies like uh, Aladdin, you know, he has the wishes. Like why that's, those things are, are, are draws to us. And I began to think, and I, I, I would say to you tonight, I think that we're drawn to this idea of wishes is that all of us in our life have things about us or things about our lives that we wish were better, that we wish were different. Uh, you know, maybe it's our hair color. We don't want to be ginger anymore. Uh, maybe it's, we don't like traffic and we would like to teleport. Uh, you know, all of us have something in our lives that we wish was different. And the thing is, is that for our lives, we are promised and we're taught that if we wish for something, it it, it could happen. Uh, Think about, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Pinocchio, but there's the lyrics to this song. And if you're a Disney fan, you, you know the lyrics to the song, even if you don't know the movie. And here's what the song says. When you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. Anything your heart desires will come to you. See, when I was a kid, I used to watch that movie and I would hear that song and I was like, man, if I could just wish for anything my heart desires, it will come to me. Like I can, I can, if, you know, they would say, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. And I'm here today, guys, to burst your bubble and say that is wrong. When I went to college, I decided I wanted to be a doctor. I am now standing before you very undoctorly. Like I, it's just because you wish it, just because you want it to be true, you still have to pass chemistry, right? Like it doesn't really matter if you wish it to be true, you still have to achieve the things that it requires to, for your wish to come true. Even if you want to teleport somewhere, the, the science just doesn't, isn't there right now. Like it doesn't always work out this way. And you know it's true because if you've ever wished for something and you didn't get your wish, you know it sometimes can be crippling. But I think all of us in our lives, every person in this room has something in their life that you wish you could change, whether it's your, your, yourself, your person, maybe it's your family, your home life, maybe it's your friend group. Uh, maybe for some of you, it's, you know, you wish you had a different color lay on today, that we, we picked different colors for your grades. I mean, everybody in this room has something that they wish was a little bit different. What I've realized is if you want to actually make change in your life, if you actually want to make change in the world, wishing 
is the worst thing to do. Because wishing is just uh, setting yourself up for disappointment. If you actually want to change things, if you actually want to change the world, you need two specific things. You need these two things right here. You need power and you need hope. All right, I told you that when I was in college, at one point in time, I wanted to be a doctor. Um, the, the things I needed, I needed the power, the mental power, the, the, the ability to learn all the stuff that I needed to learn so that I could pass the MCAT and get into to, to medical school. And I needed the hope to believe that it was worth it, right? That I would push through and I'd be able to do it. You need power and you need hope. And so tonight what we're going to talk about is how do we get these two things specifically in the area of our life when it comes to our faith? How do we tap into the power and hope that God provides for us when we center our lives on him? See, I, I feel like uh, Jesus' early followers are probably uh, lacking in these two areas greatly back in, 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 in the, the early days of, of the Christian faith in the Bible. Jesus has come and he's lived his life. And, and if you've been in church long enough, you know the story of Jesus. He, he, he dies on the cross and, and spoiler alert, he rises from the dead. And that's kind of the point of this whole thing. And when he comes back to life, it seems like all their problems are going to be solved. Jesus apparently is a real life genie who grants wishes and heals people and makes things happen that you can't believe. He doesn't quite teleport, but he does walk on water, which is still pretty cool. Shrek, if you think about it, if you don't believe me, try it at your pool sometime this summer. Make sure someone videos it because it will be hilarious. Uh, but it's, it's a situation where these people are beginning to think Jesus is about to do something really new and incredible in the world. And then he flips it on them and he's like, hey, uh, I'm about to leave and I'm going to put you guys in charge. But before I do, I want to give you two things. And specifically the two things he gives them are power and hope. In Matthew chapter 28, this is what it says in verse 18. And Jesus came to them, this is his followers, his disciples, and he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth. Basically, all the powers that God has on heaven and on earth have been given to me. Jesus is saying, hey, there's not anybody in this world that's more powerful, that's stronger, that can do more than I can do. It's all been given to me. And the crazy thing about that is, is that if this was me, if this was you, if this was really anybody you've ever met in your life and they had all the power that ever existed on heaven and on earth, we would all squander it on ourselves. But that's not what Jesus does. Jesus immediately flips it towards others. He says, all power on heaven and earth has been given to me. And he decides that he wants to not keep the power for himself, but to give it away to his people, to give it away to his disciples, to give it away to his followers, to give it away to you and I today. And if you don't believe it, uh, I pulled roughly 15 or 20 instances in God's word where it talks about the power that we're given when we begin to walk with Jesus, when we believe in Jesus, the power that comes with God living within us. This is just some of the examples. Ephesians 6.10 says that we have the power to withstand evil. Luke 9.1 says we have the power to cure diseases. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says we have the power to demolish the, the beliefs in our minds. James 4.7 says we have the power to resist evil. 2 Timothy 1.7 says you have the power of self-control, love, and a sound mind. John 10, 27 says you have the power to hear, understand, and follow God's will for your life. Luke 1, 37 says you have the power to do the seemingly impossible. And if you don't believe me, in Ephesians 6, 1, it says that you have the power to obey your parents, which for some of you feels seemingly impossible at this stage of life. Hebrews 4, 12 says you have the power to discern and understand the Bible. 1 Timothy 4, 12 says that you have the power to be an example to all the adults in your life. Small group leaders, I'm sorry I read that out loud. First Peter 2.15 says that you, that you have the power to do the will of God. Acts 5.29 says you have the power to obey God more than you have the power to obey people. Luke 4.18 says you have the power to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Luke 4.12 says you have the power to do greater works than even Jesus did. Which is pretty incredible because I don't know all of you in the room, but I've never heard of any of you guys curing any diseases or walking on any bodies of water. But we're promised that with God's power living in us, we can do even more amazing things than they saw Jesus do. And Jesus tells his disciples that right before he tells them this. He says, because you have my power living, I have all the power and I'm giving it to you. And because you have my power living in you, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Jesus says, you have the power to go and change the world. If you believe in Jesus and you have God's power living inside of you, God's spirit living inside of you, you have the power to go and change the world. And I know what you're probably thinking. For a lot of you in your room, you're like, no, 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 Heath, uh, not me, right? Like this verse is about somebody else, maybe like somebody in your life who is really close to, to, 
to God, somebody who really has it going on, maybe knows more about the Bible than I do, or they're more faithful at church, or, or maybe this is your first time at church, and you're just like, well, I don't, I don't have the power to, to, to change my schedule right now, much less the, the power to change the world. But what's crazy is, Jesus said this to a group of young people. Most of the disciples, most of Jesus' followers were in their late teens and early 20s, which is the age of a lot of you in this room. And he says, hey, you have the power to go and tell everyone in the world, all nations, about what I've done, about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to do everything that I've taught you to do. And it worked. You know how I know? Because 2,000 years later, we're at a church right now, a church that started that moment that day, that he gave these young people this challenge, this opportunity. He says, hey, go and change the world and I will give you all the power that you need to do it. And they did it. They did it because we're here talking about it today, 2,000 years later. And I think it's amazing because if Jesus' early followers would have been like, man, that sounds great, Jesus. I, I wish we could, but, uh, you know, we, we, it's, it's the year 33 AD. Like, we, there's, we, there's no cars. There's no boats. There's no, well, there's boats. But there's not like boats like we have boats. Like, they can't cross the ocean. There's no planes. This is impossible. How, most of us haven't even graduated high school. What, what do you mean we have the power to go and change the world? And I think Jesus doesn't say it, but I think the important part of this is that before you can change the world, you have to first understand that you can change your world, that you can change your life and you can change the lives of the people around you. And if enough people do that, enough of you guys buy into that and begin to do that, you can begin to see real large scale change, not only in our world, but across the world. And so when it comes to this, Jesus says, you have all the power that you need because you have my power living inside of you. And the second thing he wants to give them is hope, which I told you earlier, wishing and hoping are two very different things. Uh, I found a definition of wish that, that looks something like this. A, a wish is a want or desire for something that likely will not or cannot happen. You're wishing for something that likely will not or cannot happen. Jack, I love you, brother, but you're going to be a ginger. Like you can dye your hair some other color, <laughs> but it's going to grow back red. Like it's a wish for something that will not or cannot happen, right? And we all know that to be true. Like I'm picking on Jack because I know him, but like it's a real thing. It's, it's, it's a wish is something that you, be honest, it's probably not going to happen. For instance, um, I'm married. Uh, if we haven't yet, I'm married. My wife's name's Erin. Erin uh, is a sweet lady, honestly, but I do not cross her, okay? Like she scares me just enough that uh, I respect her. Uh, and in public, I'm like, she's wonderful and great, but uh, you know, if I could get you guys behind closed doors, I'm like, gosh, she's intense, right? Like there's certain times when I'll like mouth back to her or I'm like, I've had a long day and I'm just kind of like sassy back to her and or like, I'll say something that's a little bit like on edge. And Aaron will say something and, and, and guys, you, you may have seen your mom do this, uh, small group leaders in the room, maybe your wives have done this to you. Um, this doesn't mean what it says, what she says, okay? Because I'll say something and she'll say, I wish you would. And in that moment, that is something that will not or cannot happen for me to continue to live. Maybe you guys have done that before. You've talked back to your mom or something, and she, you know, it's a very distinct stance. Like the hip goes out, so maybe there's a hand on the hip. The other hand starts waving a finger around. My wife usually comes with like a stern eyebrow motion and maybe like a clenched jaw, and she says, I wish you would, right? And in that moment, she's communicated to me that it is a wish for something that certainly is unlikely to happen. Because I know that if I push it even further, I'm dead, right? And, and maybe some of you have, have crossed that line with your mom or someone in your life that gives you that same kind of, I wish you would moment. So we all know that a wish in its core is something that shouldn't, couldn't, probably won't happen. By contrast, what we're talking about tonight is not wishes. We're not wishing for the world to change. I'm not wishing for your world to change. I have hope that it can Hope, by contrast, is a belief that your future can be brighter than your past. And this is maybe the most important part, that you have a role to play in it. It's a belief that better days are ahead. And the second part, that you have the power to make that happen. Uh, a simpler way, if, if that's too much words for you, I know I've got some 14-year-olds uh, in the room now. So uh, let me get this shorter for you, less words, right? Uh, summer reading is a thing. So here you go. Wishing waits. You're sitting around waiting for something to happen, but hope hunts. It's active. Wishing is inactive. Like none of you are like that you had a wish a moment ago. Like if I wish for a million wishes or infinite wishes, I'm not going to like 
leave here today and start trying to figure out how to make that a reality in my life. I'm just going to sit around, keep doing the same things I've been doing, hoping that maybe one day I find a genie who's like, hey, here's a million wishes, right? Like, I, I'm just going to sit around and wait for it to happen. Hope is active. Hope pursues. Hope means that you are taking a role in the process. Hope is something that you have to get moving in order to do. And so when Jesus gives his disciples, his followers, he gives them power. The second thing he makes sure he gives them is hope. And this is what he tells them when he gives them hope. He says in the last part of verse 20, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age, to the very end of time. Hey, I've got your back. In 1 John 4, 4, uh, the apostle John says it like this. He says that because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world, you can do anything that is possible because the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. God's Spirit is living inside of you. And you have hope that better days are ahead. Greater things are ahead. Greater things in you are, are, are at work than the lives that you've ever been told. Greater things are at work in you than the fears that hold you back from taking action. Greater things are happening within you than the anxiety that you feel around a, a, a big decision in your life. Greater things are in you than the decision that you have to make where you know your life is going to go down one path or the other. And so if you're here tonight, I want you to be challenged by uh, the, the words that Jesus gives us here in this passage. That essentially, you can change not only the, the world around you, but you can change the people around you. You can change your family, your, your community. You can change your friend group. You can change your schools, and, and, and the, the thing just keeps growing. If you can buy into his power lives within you and that there is a hope for better days ahead. If that's something that you're interested in, I can't think of a better place for you to spend your time and a better place for you to be actively involved than right here at Inside Out on Sunday afternoons because our goal and what we want for each and every one of you is essentially three things. And the first one is I want you to know and love God. Here's the thing. If you don't know and love God, his power is not at work inside of you and you are already halfway out of that equation. You, you have to have a knowledge of him and a growing relationship with him. And we want you to be actively knowing your heavenly father, your creator, and walking with him so that you can experience his power in your life and you can see how he can work within you to change your world. The second thing is I want you to lead your friends. Here's the thing, guys. If you call yourself a Christian, if you're going to follow God, it is not a solo project. It is a group project. It's the reason why ninth graders in the room, the very first thing you did when you got here today is we wanted to introduce you to your small group and your small group leaders. Upperclassmen, you guys already know this to be true, but walking, following Jesus, loving God is not a solo project. It is a group project. We have to work together, do it together in a collective group. It's better, we're better when we are together. And so what I want you to do is I want you to lead your friends. If your friends are making dumb decisions, if they're doing things you know they shouldn't be doing, be the one who steps up and say, says something. If, if you have friends who don't know Jesus, invite them to this place. Let them come and hang out with you. None of your groups are closed. Like, your groups are open. If you have friends who need to be a part of a place like this, invite them and bring them with you. The last thing is Jesus calls us to live differently. People should notice something different about the way you treat them and about the way you live your life because you live differently. The way you speak to people is differently. The way that you treat people is differently. The way that you live your life should be set apart from other people around you because you know your heavenly father. So basically to summarize these things, what I want for each and every one of you and what I believe this place is to be true is this, that I believe that for each and every one of you, the best is yet to come. You've not lived the best days of your life yet. And you have a role to play into making that happen that God is actively working and involved in each and every one of your lives. And he has something for you to do to step up. Some of you need to work on your relationship with God. You need to spend more time praying or talking to him or, or digging into his word and seeing what he has to say to you. Some of you need to step it up when it comes to leading your friends. You need to, to be a more active voice and being a good, good influence and a positive role model for them in your life. Some of you need to start living differently because you love God and you do your best to lead your friends, but you look just like everybody else at school. You talk like them, you act like them, and there's nothing that sets you apart from them except for the fact on Sunday afternoons you show up to Brown's Bridge. And so for every single one of us, I believe these two things to be true, that there is hope, that there are better days ahead for you in your life. I have hope that, that you haven't lived your best day yet, that God has bigger things in store for you, and he wants more for your life and more for your relationship with him than you have yet experienced. And the second thing is that you have a part to play, that there is something that you actively need to be doing to pursue him, and that God's spirit has given you the power and the ability to live that out each and every day. Your challenge and what I want you to do is to figure out what that looks like and how that applies to your life. And so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
in a few minutes dismiss you guys and send you to small groups to let y'all discuss what that looks like and how you can discover uh, how to live a life that is better in days ahead and what role God wants you to play in that life. But first, because I believe so passionately that the best is yet to come, what I would love to do is take a minute to just pray for each and every one of you. And then we're going to close in a song. So if you haven't figured it out yet, here at Inside Out, we like to link up during prayer. So grab a hand of the person next to you. Uh, put your hand across someone's shoulders. It's a great way to get to know people. And then if you will, bow your head and pray with me. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much just for the encouragement that we hear tonight. God, each and every one of us, you are not done with us yet. If we are still breathing in this room, you have more to do in our lives. You have more to teach us. You have more to grow with us. You have uh, more for us to do. The, the, our best days are not behind us, but ahead of us. And so God, as inside out and as uh, small group leaders and as high school students in this room, God, I pray that you would use this place. I pray that you would use our small groups. I would pray that you would use our, our gatherings on Sunday afternoon, our camps like Daytona, all the things that we do, God, I pray that you would use them to help point us to you, to show us that you have more for us to do. And that God, when we leave this place and we go out and we live in the world, that we would live out that power living inside of us and that the hope that we have for better days ahead would be contagious to our families, to our friends, to our communities, to our neighborhoods, to our sports teams, to everybody who's around us, God, that we would live out the, the relationship that we have with you so well. We would lead our friends so well. We would live lives that are so different and encouraging and refreshing to our community that people would say, hey, I don't know what you're doing, but I wanna be a part of whatever that is. God, that's my prayer for each and every one of us in this room that Lord, that we would begin to experience you in a fresh and new way. And as we kick off summer and we get ready for all the things you have for us this summer, God, I truly believe that in us and through us that the best is yet to come for us. And so God, we pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus, and all God's people said, amen. amen.